Okay, so the the observer. So the thing with the, uh, the observer is the way you, one does the observer, which is for, uh, you could say it's a kind of a, an Advaita non-duality experiential tool to realize the self, uh, the self which is not limited, and to let go of identif identifying with that which is limited or, or transitory. So one way to do the observer, and I often talk about a mug or a cup, or um, or a mobile phone, which is an object, is to know that, I mean, what is the nature of an object? I mean, if, if you're seeing a, like a mobile phone or a mug or a cup or a chair, the thing with these are that they're objects. And um, me, what do I mean by an object? It means that it has a size and a shape. So if anything has a, like it's so long, it's so thin, it's got, it seems to have such a texture, you see, you know, it's, it's something that can be here and not be here. Uh, it's something that seems to exist in the world of form. If they, and so that's what I call an object. If you're experiencing an object, then whatever it is, can you be the observing or the witnessing of it? So it's most easy to start this practice if you're new to it by, um, by uh, witnessing or observing something in the room which is quite neutral, like a mug or a table or a light. And just notice uh, in your own spiritual experience, not using the head, that it's quite clear that you are the observer of the mug, but the, and the, the mug, which is an object or the table, is not you. That's very, very clear spiritually and experientially. So if, you, if you're able to do that, that gives you, if you like, a calibration to be able to know that, yes, an object out there in the room is not what I am. I am the observer of that object. The next thing to do, how you do self-inquiry or this practice, is to notice how you what is the nature of yourself right now? How do you experience yourself? Now, depending on uh, how much spiritual work you've done, you may experience yourself as uh, the, uh, a feeling of the body, lots of thoughts that are passing by. You may have tensions or aches and, and pains. Uh, all kinds of things you may experience this as what you habitually experience as self. So you then use it depending on what's uh, what seems to be the most strongest for you. Is it your thinking? Is it the body? Is it feelings in the body? Then it's to notice that using the same principles as that for a mug or a table or a lamp, can you now be, be and if let's t say you're aware of the body, the size, the shape, the awareness, uh, the density, or any sensations in the body, well, that's an object, and that has limitation. Something is noticing how tall the body is, how heavy the body is, sensations in the body, where it seems to be located. So all of this means it's an object. So can you now, like you, you could experience being the observer of a table or a mug, can you now be the observing of the body? So can you be the detached observing or the detached witnessing of the body? Because the body, you know, the sensations of the body or the body or the awareness of the body can come and go and change. But what is observing that? Can you be the witnesser or the observer of the body? As you become the observer, if the observer is like somehow seems to be merging with the body or is not very clearly what I call detached, on, on unidentified or unhooked from the body, then you can, that is what I call an interested observer. So can you now be uh, the uninterested observer? Is there an observer or witnessing here which has no interest, does not want to hook or attach or identify the body in any way? Almost as if the body was a meaningless object out there. So this is not a mental exercise, this is an experiential exercise. Can you be the witnesser that's not hooking into the body? As you, as you do this, you may experience that there's a clear witnessing, even that the body disappears, or there's a clear detached space between the observer and the body. And it's clearly, uh, spirit, there's clear spiritual experience that the body is not the observing of the body. Another one that uh, is one of the main ones is thoughts. And the huge addiction, uh, the, you know, I'd say one of the most extreme addictions to thinkingness to what's going on, the next thoughts, all the thoughts. I mean, the, 
the thinking is like the most entertaining drama uh, for the separated self. You know, all the, the thoughts that parade uh, and that pass by. You know, there's a thought of this, there's a thought of that. Well, many of the thoughts actually are quite meaningless and actually hardly register and hardly are picked up. But especially the special thoughts, meaningful thoughts, uh, something seems to want to hook in, identify, and be entertained by these uh, special or meaningful thoughts. So it's almost like there's some kind of huge addiction or interest in, in thinkingness. The thinkingness and the thoughts and even the interest or the identification with thoughts, this is all, um, these are all form or objects that are passing by. How do you know it's an object? Well, obviously, if a thought passes by, it's discrete, you know, like uh, the sky is green, the table is blue, um, you know, whatever it is, the clouds are grey. So these are thoughts which are passing by and transitory. So something must be observing or something here is witnessing these passing clouds or thoughts. Can you be the observer of the thoughts? Can you be the detached observing or the detached witnessing of thoughts? So as you, as you, uh, if you experience this detached witnessing, is the witnesser registering thoughts? And if the witnesser is registering thoughts or getting hooked into thoughts, well, if you get hooked into a meaningful thought, just unhook and see if you can be that detached observing which is not hooking into any thoughts. And if this witness, is this witnesser free from identifying with thoughts? It's not plagued by thoughts or hooking into thoughts. If it's not, uh, if it's not great, but if it is, if this observing is somehow hooking in or is disturbed by the passing thoughts, is there an observer of that observer? Is there an observer here in which all thoughts are meaningless and in which there is no need to hook in or identify with thoughts? Now, as you do this, you can do this with, uh, uh, with thoughts, with the body. Are there any feelings here and sensations here? And if there are, those are objects. What's observing those? Is there a sense of location? Is there a sense of being located somewhere, like you're located in a room? But that also, the data of location or the registering of location, but what's observing the, regi you know, the registering of location or the identification with location? What observes that? Can you be in the witnessing of location? And in, the, in being the witnessing, in the witnessing of location, does it location exist? Also, many people who are what I call in time or track time, uh, or are very aware of time, this, they have this strong sense of time, almost as if the mind is tracking seconds. Is there something here which observes time? Is there something here that witnesses time and has no interest in time? If you can be in the clear witnessing of that which has no interest in time, in this place does time exist? So as you take it back, as you let go of all the things of hooking into this, that and the other time, body, sensations, thoughts, or, uh, now what is your experience being in the observer? And is there any sense of being limited, being a, an object like a thought or a body or a feeling? If there is, what's observing this? Because this observer is not the pure observer. This observer is still limited or is at least interested in objects. So then what is observing this observer? Is there an observer that is not interested in bodies or thoughts or feelings or registering form? And if you are in this observer, is this observer limited? Or has it got a diameter or a shape? Or is it constricted in any way? Because that will be then the next thing that you could see if something is observing that. So let's take just a, a minute or so just to be, um, just to practice in silence the observer and to do the practice within yourself. And then we'll, we'll come back into the meeting. And I'm gonna...